House Republicans, they just voted along party lines to officially authorize an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. So we bring in our political analyst, Gary Dietrich. All right, Gary, what is the story behind this and what is the potential impact here? Well, it's been brewing for a while, as you guys know. And the bottom line is simply this. Was the president involved in his son's financial dealings? Now, now, here we had Hunter Biden yesterday saying, oh, you know, I'm, I mean, absolutely adamant. This and is all tears. lies. There's nothing there. Yeah. But, the, you know, people are getting used to this word impeachment. It's going to be around for a while now. And what this really does for the House is enable them to use the full gamut of their arsenal. I mean, to, to request depositions, to call people in, to get documents. That's what it's really about, guys. It ups the ante in terms of them being able to amass information. And then we'll see where it goes from there, whether there's a formal impeachment actually voted on or not. All right. Before you ask Pause, the question, yeah. your microphone's disappeared. It just somewhere. went through your jacket, I think. We just dropped it. <laughs> One more time again. <laughs> Yeah, this microphone, people. It's, it's in your pocket. It's in his pocket. I'm not sure it ever made it on the jacket, so at least we know. While well, Gary's doing so that. <laughs> we now have sound, people. Good thing That's you have the important such a good thing. booming voice. We could hear you. It was uh, rustling a little bit, but you talked about it. You touched on it. Facing those tax evasion charges. He made that appearance, so yesterday. Am I going to get impeached for that? Okay, right. <laughs> There's an inquiry in the newsroom right now. Yeah, it's being written up. Going on. It's being written up, led by uh, old Curtis here. Thank now, you. Now, what was his rea what's your reaction, though, to those remarks that Hunter Biden made? about the possible impeachment. I mean, well, I think the defiance, Hunter, really surprised a lot of people. I mean, it was unequivocal. It was, you know, like, hey, listen, this is lies, lies, and more lies. I mean, a lot of people thought he'd come in. He, he declined to go in front of the committee and say, you know, I'll, I'll do a private interview. Instead, he held a press conference out in front. This just ups the ante. It's not going to be easy for the president to deal with this. 11 months to an election. His son's under criminal charges. We now have, as you guys just asked about, the impeachment inquiry. This is, you know, you'd rather be talking about the stock market going up 500 points mm -hmm. yesterday, not about this, right? How much of this was strategy, though, him showing up in front of that uh, news conference outside the Capitol that he created? How much of that was the Democratic Party saying, hey, Hunter, you got to do something to help out your dad? Well, I mean, when the vote was going on inside, he was outside yeah. doing that. I don't think that was accidental. No. All right. So a recent poll shows President Biden not doing well with the approval ratings, now the lowest point of his presidency. Yep. And the poll also showing, hey, if the election was held today, mm. Trump would become the next president president over Biden. So what do you make of these polls at this point now that we're about 11 months out? Well, here, here's a comparison that surprised a lot of people this week. If you look at yesterday's poll numbers for the sitting president and exactly four years ago to the day for the former president, believe it or not, Trump's poll numbers then going into that election, five points higher than Biden's are now. Mm -hmm. And that's what really has Democrats, including David Oxrod, longtime Democratic strategist, using the words very, very dark about the current poll numbers. Mm -hmm. So the White House, they're certainly going to be spending part of their Christmas break thinking about where do we go from here. Like you said, not talking about the stock market, we're talking about the legal troubles, which is usually Trump. Uh, who in the hot seat. All right, let's bring it back closer to home. We're talking about the city manager just got another pay raise, uh, the sixth pay raise, bringing his salary to above $400,000. I mean, is this a good use of taxpayer money, people are asking? Well, I'll tell you, it, it comes on the heels of a lot of people saying, listen, we've got homelessness issues, we have other people losing jobs, and we're giving our city manager, who reportedly has the highest city manager pay in the entire state of California, yet another race. The optics, as we say in politics, guys, just don't look good. Now, we've got a mayor's race coming up next year. Will this become part of that conversation? I think so. I mean, you know, the people ask the basic question. Okay, it's an important job. We couldn't get somebody for 200000 for 250000 right? And, and I think that's the problem. How do you justify under the current economic climate? By the way, when the state's also facing a $68 billion economic shortfall, that is going to trickle down and have impact on local government budgets. I think this question is certainly not settled yet. Mm. Going to be one to watch for. Mm -hmm. All right, Gary Dietrich, we appreciate your insight always. Thanks Talk so to much. you guys soon. All right.